Thank you. Thank you, Kehi. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to be here on this show and uh, talking to you all about women's health and women's care. I bring you greetings from my city, Agra, where I am from the city of Taj. And I wish all women to be very healthy, safe and disease free. That is what our aim is. Then only the country can progress. The health of the country is measured by the health of the mothers. And if we have healthy mothers, we're going to have healthy generations. Wonderful. Wonderful. Health of a country depends on the health of mothers, health of women, health of ladies. Absolutely. And health of our girls who are our future. So well said. Doctor, let me just start off with this wonderful slogan. What was the genesis of it? I mean, you were the first man to come up with this Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. Where did this come from? It's so amazing. And uh, that's why I want to know the background of the genesis of it, please. So, two, 2008, I took over as president of FOXI. That is a federation of obstetrics and gynecological societies of India. And we are in 250 cities, our branches with 40,000 obstetricians uh, in Adit. So right from the beginning, I was very academic in ultrasound and laparoscopy. And everyone told me, your theme should be something on academics. But at that time, I thought academics, everyone talks about. We learn it, we go to conferences, we do CMEs. So what India needs is a social uplift. So what we called as social obstetrics. So for social obstetrics, I said, we have to go into the villages and have a look at these women. So once we did a pilot and went into some villages, we found out these uh, girls were not even given proper food, what to say about education and school. So, and they were like just mm, the last morsel of food was given to them. They were not vaccinated completely. This is 2008. 20, and it was shameful that in 2008, our Indian girls in the villages are... So I thought, Beti ko bachana padega. So Beti bachao was the first thing which came to my mind. And chalo gaon chale. When I came back, I said, it is not only Beti Bachao, how will we Bachao? We have to padhao her. So the education is very important. Once they get educated, they will try to fend for themselves and try to get themselves empowered. And this is the time I said, women's problem is weep. Weep is crying, no, but W-E-E-E-E-P. -E 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 so education, environment, employment, and uh, empowerment. So I said, if we remove this weep from our women, they will be right now. It is very difficult to do this in a country like ours, rather in the world. Even the world educated women are still not empowered. Look at USA, the most educated country. They'll never have a woman president because uh, it's still a men's world. So we're trying. And that is how we tried. And we did a Bharat Jagruti Yatra from Kanyakumari to Shirinagar on all the routes taking two coastal routes and the central route. And every village we stopped and educated them about the rainbow uh, in women's life. So we told them, get them free of anemia, get them vaccinated, give them proper diet, give them proper exercise, and give them proper education. So the seven problems of women, if we can look, we can bring a rainbow in women's life. And of course, India would progress once a woman's self progress. So that was how the whole thing started. And I felt so glad that in 2014, our Honorable Prime Minister took this as a national slogan and is doing very well. By the way, last year I modified this slogan because since 2014, with the government pushing it, all girls are getting educated, even villages. So we have MA, MD, we have PhDs also in village girls, but still they are not empowered. Still they are being uh, dominated by boys and males. So I said, so let us remove the padhao. Beti Bachao is still not happening. So we have now made it into Beti Bachao and Beta Samjao. So Beta Samjao, Beti Bachao. So once we un the males understand, then only the Betis will be Bachao. So that is how the whole thing is going on. Wonderful, Doctor. My compliments, compliments from all our side. I'm sure all people listening into this podcast will be proud of you. I mean, a lot of people talk of, uh, you know, one, one common statement is progress is dependent on how is the progress in rural India. And you've actually uh, dedicated yourself to rural India and looked at social upliftment and also social obstetrics. And I like what you said, education, environment, employment, and empowerment for women. 
uh, it couldn't have been summarized better. That shows the progress of the nation. Uh, and and it's, it's very interesting to see that, you know, uh, even in 2008, so many things were had to be done. And you, this this uh, uh, campaign of yours, Chalo Gao Chalo, you just touched upon it. Uh, uh, Dr. can you dwell into this a little more in detail? And tell us this campaign of yours, Chalo Gao Chale. Uh, you know how has it progressed across the you know, across the four parameters you mentioned about that is education, environment, employment, and empowerment. Uh, where have we progressed from 2008 to 2023? So long back, I was uh, very very uh, touched and uh, influenced by a man called Muhammad Fatala from Egypt, who was the world president. And he, in his statement, when I was a young uh, gynecologist, just passed out in 84 or 85, I heard him talk and he said, women are not dying of diseases we cannot cure. Women are dying because we don't have, the society has to decide whether their lives are worth saving. Now, that touched me a lot. So it is a society who has to decide whether women are going to die or live during childbirth. And... uh, and then we did, and then then I talked, and then I, I was always a village person, so I went to the villages. And I, we saw that women have no um, means to come. So there was a delay system, delay in diagnosis of uh, maternal health, delay in transport, and delay in making decisions. So these three delays were causing the fourth D, that is death in women. And our maternal mortality in 1986-87 was over 560 or maybe 600 per one lakh of women delivering babies. Shameful. We are we were right at the bottom. So that is when I said we have to build roads. India has to build roads so these people can come. And India has to build up the primary health center. The primary health center on paper is fantastic. But we have to make them functioning as wellness clinics, not as illness clinics. That is exactly when the political will came in 2014 and we saw that roads being built, connectivity being there, all the primary health centers uh, converted into wellness and the Chalo Gaon, Chalo uh, movement, which we started in a very small way as going to a village, doing awareness, doing some hemoglobin, giving some tablets and coming back, which was not effective. But now it is taking shape. And we are improving the women's health. And I'm very, very proud to say that from 600 plus in 1986 and uh, about 200 in 2014, our maternal mortality per lack of women delivering has come down to 97. Our target was 70, but we are still doing very well. India has done fantastic in, in getting the maternal mortality down. Our aim is 30 by 2030. But I'm sure we're going to reach till about 50. So 50 women dying in one lakh childbirths is acceptable. But 500, 600 was not acceptable. And we are down to 97. Just because we went to the villages and took care of these uh, pregnant women. Right from adolescent, from young age. Preparing them for pregnancy. Looking after their pregnancy. Giving them institutional deliveries at the hospitals. Free of cost. And that is how it is. And it all started in Gujarat. And in Uttar Pradesh, we we led the campaign, Janani Suraksha Yojana and all. Then the government pitched in with a huge amount of funds and the huge amount of uh, programs, which they took help from the private sector. And now the private public partnership is yielding results. So that is how the story of Chalo Gaon Chale is. Very good, doctor. Very good. It's most amazing the kind of uh... Uh, successes you've had more than you know actual figures. I mean the figures are, are quite stunning. The kind of uh, you know success you've had. It's 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 the kind of focus and the relentless efforts and the teamwork that's gone into it over the last fifteen years. Uh, and so much of of progress has happened in an area which was absolutely needed. And uh, you know, uh, I for one, uh, I've always believed that uh, India is a blessed land because Indian women are the best in the world. And, uh, you know, please, please uh, uh, take this as a quote if you want. And I'm sure you will agree with me. And a whole lot of people in our country will be proud to say this. Indian women are the best in the world, not just in terms of intelligence, not just in terms of competence, but overall in terms of abilities. Give them a responsibility and they can deliver it end to end. 
with amazing efficiency, amazing uh, efficacies, and amazing uh, sense of responsibilities with which they deliver, and uh, without much of a fuss. So I think we are blessed as a country to have such women, and so important that people like you are leading from the front in, in ensuring that everything around women is attended to. Uh, now, how has this wellness clinic developed, Doctor, and how is it uh, helping women uh, across the board? So the whole concept of wellness after my presidentship, uh, 10 years later, my wife became the president of the uh, Foxy. And she started with uh, quality ethics and dignity for women. So then uh, the wellness clinics had already, the government had already started making them from 2014. And she was called to lead this on. Uh, so now you we have to understand you, the origin of adult diseases a lot of us get blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease. The origin of all the, these diseases are in the womb. The baby which is growing in, in the womb is genetically prone to some diseases. And then the bad genes are activated by the environment. That is the epigenetics. So we, if we take care of the epigenetics, and the epigenetics means the correct diet, the correct yoga, the correct exercise, the correct lifestyle, the correct mental health, which is very, very important now, so free of depression. So that concept was thrown to the government and the government picked it up and in their national program, now they have a mental health program. And Prime Minister Modi said that we must convert these primary health centers rather than looking for disease into wellness. So whoever comes to these centers is given a wellness um, lecture and a wellness um, awareness program. So they're told to look after their diet. So rather than treating disease, we've gone into preventing disease. And that is what is the concept of wellness. So we will prevent the future generation from having blood pressure disease, non-communicable diseases, like blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, uh, mental illness, uh, memory loss. All that can be prevented if you start with wellness rather than treating just disease with pills and all. So that this is the concept of wellness absolutely great. This is something absolutely great. I mean, look at the wellness segment and ensure that uh, uh, illness doesn't happen. Even if it happens, it's delayed. And, uh, you know, unless absolutely not necessary, it, uh, uh, it unless forced, it doesn't happen. That's the extent to which one can stretch wellness. You mentioned about yoga, exercise, mental health, and you just touched upon diet. Now, that's where, you know, uh, Nutrify today and such organizations can come in and create an ecosystem uh, of uh, proper, uh, you know, nutritionals and nutrif uh, nutrif and uh, you know, what shall we say, nutrient content in the diet for for women in particular. Since we are focused on women in this particular edition, uh, what more can be done from organizations like Nutrify Today and from such similar organizations? towards helping and creating a better ecosystem for women, doctor? So Nutrify Today organization is a wonderful, wonderful concept. And it has brought all those who are into making nutraceuticals, all the us doctors who are interested in wellness clinics and anti-aging uh, for women and for men, everyone and for children. So it's brought us all under one umbrella. And today we discuss how we can improve the wellness right from the womb of the baby, of the mother. So when the fetus is inside the mother, look after the mother's nutrition. So give her proper iron, calcium, multivitamins, minerals. Now they come in expensive tablets. They come in... Ex so instead of going expensive, give them the right amount of food and fortify that food. So instead of uh, having um, food which is on uh, chemicals, <coughs> grown on chemicals, Try to switch over to organic foods and try to organic manure. And if it is not there, what if I put iron in the atta, put the iodine in the salt as we have been doing and you prevent so many diseases. It's just a simple fortification. If it is not possible, make the nutrition supplement affordable. All the nutrition powders and multivitamin capsules and all are atrociously expensive because they come into food supplement. So when it is... Uh, um, past licensed as food you can have there is no cap on the charges once it comes as medicine then uh, the it can be capped 
so we should have a cap on the nutrition uh, supplements and try to make it affordable and try to make it the right amount for the right age so for pregnant women for post delivery women for uh, uh, women who are lactating breastfeeding for 2 years for women who are in the perimenopause in the menopause and before that in the infant 1 year of age then uh, childhood up to 5 years of age then adolescent the teens and then the college days and then preparing them for marriage premarital uh, food supplements the folic acid is simple five five paisa a tablet and it prevents thousands of diseases in women and in the baby which they'll have in the future so that that kind of awareness we can create and we can assure that all the supplements are of right quality and right uh, amount and we we must nutify india must assure that it is does not become too costly and we must uh, advise the government to fortify foods the common foods everyone eat everyone eats atta rice and salt and pepper so fortify those with proteins with iron with calcium whatever which does not get spoiled and then talking about yoga and epidemic exercise give a awareness program along with it so you have a holistic approach uh, absolutely towards, uh, you know the talking of this i was uh, i was just about coming to that and you touched upon this point of holistic health care holistic approach uh, towards nutritionals in women now you spoke about uh, uh, fortifying food with proteins uh, is there a methodology to do that yes there is and uh, atta fortification uh, is already there and uh, with iron and calcium and food proteins you can add to that the taste becomes a little altered but you can and multi grain atta and all and uh, have people i i just saw an advertisement where sharukh khan was advertising for iron fortified atta those are the guys catch them tell them this is your moral responsibility to do it for india do it free for us so i'm sure people like amitabh bachchan uh, sharukh khan and leading film stars and leading academicians leading politicians when they speak on television national television on all modi is speaking every sunday on his man ki baat but let the others come out and speak openly and do not charge for it and you improve the health of the nation do it for the nation uh you know this this is uh, a most amazing thing that you you know touched upon now uh when you spoke about holistic health care now if we take it across the entire canvas of a woman's life right from womb to her the entire expanse of her life right um how does really one approach this in terms of making it a really holistic proposition for 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 a child and then into a young girl to as you said a premarital young lady or girl and then into a a, a homemaker or a, a professional who is also her you know i've always believed that uh, modern ladies who are you know really at the top of corporate world so many of them it's a matter of pride they also manage the home it's most amazing and that should bring them so that should bring them under a lot of you know stress uh, so how does what help them in that phase of life and then later on as they get aged uh, how does help them so across the canvas of life how does one look at it doctor so let's start with pregnancy and the growing next generation inside the womb of a woman now up to 20 weeks of gestation this baby will develop all the organs including brain and all so you need the right amount of foods in the first 5 months at 5 months that is 20 weeks this fetus growing inside has developed senses of hearing and it can hear up to 5000 words spoken outside so if there are abusive words around if the husband is abusing if the family is abusing that woman or if she is living in an environment of very abusive at- atmosphere this baby gets affected if we follow up two or three children one is good ma- natured and one is bad natured and you follow them back to the pregnancy science has shown that the uh, pregnant women who are in an atmosphere of uh, not happy atmosphere have very unhappy babies 
and very angry looking and babies who have who've gone up the wrong way. So the Garb Sanskar, which was taught to us from Mahabharat times, when Arjun told uh, the how to break the chakar view and even before that, and uh, so that baby Abhimanyu could listen to it. But because the mother went to sleep, so, so having the right Garb Sanskar, Garb Samvad, putting good music on touching the speakers, touching the woman's womb, or even in the room, reading good books, and the family talking to the unborn baby, to talking to the through the mother. That is what will lay the foundation for the healthy. And to do this, the doctors wow, have no is, time to doctor, explain this all this. Brilliant. This is brilliant. You know, ages back, as you said, right from the time of Abhimanyu, we've said this in India, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and this has proved to be true by modern science. How many times have we seen a lot of things said in Indian mythology being proved by modern science? Uh, coming to uh, this particular point, at what week did you say that uh, the the uh, baby in the womb can start hearing? Which 20 week? weeks, no. five months. Five months. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So... Because the doctors are not very, we had we don't have time. An average obstetrician spends only three minutes with a pregnant patient. Uh, sure. We should be spending fifteen minutes because we are overloaded. There are less sure. obstetricians. We are only forty thousand, taking um, of twenty five million births in India. Maybe thirty million now. One Australia per year we are producing in India. Correct. Correct. So so we are not able. So to do this during the COVID times. My wife, Dr. Jadeep Malhotra, who is an equally or probably a better obstetrician gynecologist than me, and uh, a pioneer in IVF um, in Nepal. She's responsible for 3,000 babies of Nepal being born IVF babies. So she had an idea with two, uh, uh, this thing, techies from Bangalore to make an app for pregnant women. And during the COVID time, we made an app called iMums. And this iMums app, log into it and see, it got the Pradhan Mantri's second best app being designed in India. So we won that prize. Wow, congratulations. And, to now, you. and now it is the 10, on Google rating, it is the 10 best apps in the world. And Brilliant. when Brilliant. a patient logs into this, it's got a free version, it got a subscription version, it got a super premium version. So for women's health care for the baby, whichever they want. The free version gives you morning 7 o'clock, a yoga exercise, the music, the stories of Abhimanyu and all, all those, and then tells you what to eat, makes a diet chart for you, get, makes even menus of your food if you're not able to cook, whatever. So that is what we are trying our way to how the pregnant women, because we don't have time. So we have this app, download, and in your free time, just and every Sunday we take, for the premium one, we take an hour off going through pregnancies, deliveries, what are problems. For the premium version, we do one-to-one and the clinic version is one to one, one doctor to one patient, to one pregnant lady. So any day and night, she can ask any question. That's how we are trying to a small effort. Seven and a half lakh pregnant women are logged into this app. And we were on Shark Tank just day before yesterday, uh, trying to get some funding to make this app uh, into multi-language. It's right now only in English and Hindi, but vernacular in all languages, we are trying to do that. So that's a small effort which we are trying. Absolutely brilliant. Digitalization is the way forward. And Dr. Seven and a half lakh is a good number. I'm sure it will swell. And digitalization will touch every nook and corner of this country. I'm so happy that you've actually taken it forward for women. Uh, you know, uh, since you mentioned about this again, um, you started off by saying, Chalo Gauchale, and you've made so much of progress. Uh, have we or are we in the process of developing a good infrastructure doc to maintain patient records and uh, data bank of uh, patients and, uh, uh, you know, or even even uh, uh, ladies who come to the wellness clinic, they may not be patients, they may, they may be coming for the wellness clinics, a lot of, not, not of them come. So do we have uh, or are we in the process of developing a good process, digital process to have uh, good uh, records of all these ladies uh, right from the gowns, so to say, upwards to the bigger towns and stuff like that? So, yes. Now, that is another important step which has been taken forward by this government. 
Now, see, birth records and death records were always compulsory to get filled. So we have a birth record of practically every birth occurring in India. That is, they, no, no birth can occur without being filled in a record. So okay. we can use that database. It's a huge database which we have. All death records are there. They have to be filled in, other way before they are cremated or in the hospital. So we have a cause of death record also, and that can be accessed. So okay. we can access these two records. And then we have school going children records. So uh, again, with another group of techies in Calcutta, we tried to make a healthy Phi India app and uh, electronic medical records, and which we gave free to all the doctors. Because the government and the Supreme Court has said that every Indian has to uh, health record has to be digitalized in the next 10 years. So it comes on the all their records, all their tests, which have they done. So they, they can open up on their um, uh, phone because every Indian has a phone now and can, can access health advice and access show that to any doctor which they are. So that is going on. A huge uh, push has been given to EMR, electronic medical records for all the patients. And it is easily, easily doable. At the primary health center, wellness clinics, you can fill up the rest. Birth records, you know, so at one year, how many babies can those can be approached, how many got vaccinated or not, whether their weight, height is growing well or not. Then once they go to school at five, the school will enter their, their names. It's linked to the Aadhaar card. So the, the school can access their first five years record and fill up that this baby has come to school. He is very intelligent. He's not very intelligent. He's got the right weight. He's not uh, the right weight. He's wearing spectacles. His eyes are weak. His hearing is weak. His teeth are bad. His digestive system is bad. He has worms. He has anemia. All that can be tracked at five years. And once they go to college, again, the college should enter in this EMR, which could be made central. And then at marriage, we have to fill in the marriage records also now compulsory. So it can be filled up again. And when they deliver babies, again, it is filled up. And when they die, it is. A... So it's not very difficult. And I think uh, people are at it. Some private companies have made EMRs available to hospitals. But I think we need a good uh, government backing in this to have make it totally central. See, the toll tax is central. No, now with a car, with a fast tag, anywhere in India, it is paid. No state, across the state borders. First, we have to pay state taxes everywhere. Now, if I have my fast tag is there, even in even I'm from UP, I can, with that fast tag, I can pay my car tax uh, any at any toll road on, on India. So they've, they've done it. We are the only country in the world who's done that. Absolutely. Even in the yeah, it is yeah. not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so well we said. Can, we that's can well do said. that to the health records also. I think we can do it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point you touched upon. Now, it was so heartening to hear from you that the Beti Padao part of it is going so well. And uh, children even in Gao are getting educated. We're getting MDs, we're getting MAs, we're getting postgrads. And, you know, people are getting into getting employment as well that will only increase. And that's why we see so many uh, ladies now. Uh, occupying senior positions in corporates, and we look forward to the day when this uh, uh, this gets to be more and more and more, and we have uh, more ladies than men, you know, heading corporates, and that's the day we look forward to, uh, and that's happening. It's very good. The second part of what you said, I'm coming to that now. Beti bachao, beta samjao. Uh, <laughs> so beti, beti, ah, nahi rahe na. That is the thing. Abhi bhi nahi samaj rahe because they feel threatened by the women that they'll uh, be walking shoulder to shoulder them, earning as much as them. Abhi bhi nahi samaj this is, a, that this is, is problem. sad, right? This, this yeah, is sad. Is it, sad isn't part. it an irony? I mean, I think it's about time that uh, you and I, both of us are men over here, right? And uh, I think it's about time that men in this world and in our country understand that ladies are their pillar of strength. Absolutely, you know, it's it's they're not uh, they should not get threatened by them. This is sheer yeah. nonsense. I mean, <laughs> if you walk hand in hand with ladies, they're there to actually contribute to you, and if you can contribute to them, they are willing to work with you as a good team. This this is the very essence of a woman. She's exactly. willing to work with you. She's willing to contribute to you and you contribute to her. She is happy. She is willing to work as a wonderful team towards mutual growth. And I think that's the education factor that a vast majority of our women 
of, of our men need to understand in this country. And I couldn't agree with you that uh, the more this education goes forward, the better it is. So, beta samjao, beti bachao. Beta samjana zaruri because they should not do violence, eve teasing, treat them only as sex toys, and just just and not let them come up. The boss is uh, uh, bossing over the secretary. You do this, then only you will get an increment. Uh, those, those sort of things have to go off. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you because uh, you know, uh, as I said some time back, and you you also mentioned about, and a host of people are realizing now. You know, India, the best women in the world. I keep saying that. We we'll keep saying that. We need to keep saying this as a team. In terms of intelligence, in terms of competence, in terms of efficiency, in terms of effectiveness, give them a job, and we they they make us proud. And I think it's about high time that uh, men realize that women are their strength, and they need to work together as a team. And women are willing to do that. And hopefully, that's the way everything will progress. So one final point, we just have a few minutes left off, and that is, you said when you started off your campaign of Chalo Gao Chale, uh, you know, women hardly were even given enough food and, you know, nutrients and stuff like that. Uh, you've done a lot of work, you said, towards creating an awareness of ensuring that women uh, get the right kind of food. Uh, has that improved substantially? And are women getting good food now, good nutrition in the Gaos and across uh, the bigger towns, please? So let's say it is not yet good, but it is fair. So it is improving. The okay. rate of okay. anemia, that is hemoglobin less, has come mm -hmm. down from 80% women and having uh, hemoglobin less to 67%. It's still very high. And even high in the educated uh, cities, which is uh, almost about 50%. We must bring down okay. the anemia, which is the simplest thing to treat and simplest to diagnose to less than 20% of population having less blood hemoglobin. And that uh, that is one thing if we conquer, we have won the battle of disease. Wonderful. One final thing, with Dr. Malhotra. Uh, what kind of a roadmap do you suggest as one of the pioneers who has taken so much of interest in holistic approach to women's health as one of the pioneers in that, what kind of a roadmap do you suggest forward? So the roadmap is very simple. Take care of all, not only women, take care. But if you take care of women, one, you educate one girl, you've educated that whole family. And the whole, village, so well and the whole village. And if you educate the village, you've educated the country. And if you educated the country, you are number one in the world. And which we are uh, fast progressing. Now it is left for the empowerment power and the environment. So keep our environment healthy, get rid of plastic, go to sustainable energy and go to organics, back to organics again, grow your own vegetables and eat, eat fresh and clean up your environment. Don't dirty your environment and then empower women as your own, equal to you. And that is it. We won it. You, you be brave. Doctor. We we pray to nine goddesses, we uh, no Durga, and we and then why can't we uh, respect and regard our own wife, daughter, and others' daughters and the other women? So nine goddesses. Look at all women as nine goddesses, and that's it. You pray for them. You you said it so well. In in our mythology in India, the goddess gets as much of the same divine status as our gods, and you know, uh, we know that she's, she's a reflection of Shakti, as we often say, uh, intellect. Ma Saraswati, we often say, stands for education and intellect. Ma Lakshmi for wealth and money. And uh, Ma Durga for Shakti. And uh, yes. as you very rightly said, beautifully said, when we pray to them, let's also ensure that we embody them in our own ladies, in our own women. Correct. So that's it. So educate and take care of environment and they will ensure that they get themselves very well employed. They're capable enough to do that and empower our women and be proud of them. On that note, Dr. Malhotra, thank you very much for a wonderful discussion. And we thank look you. forward and we look forward to an India which leads the world by saying our women are at the forefront. Our women 
are leading this country, our women will lead the world. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Malhotra. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed this wonderful session with Dr. Malhotra. So guys, that's KK, your anchor, signing off after a wonderful discussion with Dr. Narendra Malhotra. Let's be proud of our women. Let's empower our women. And let's ensure that India leads the way to the world where women are at the forefront. Women lead this country and women lead the way for the world forward. On that note, let me remind you, don't waste even a moment. Just download right now the Nutrify Today app and get yourself enriched with the series of Nutrify Today podcasts. This is your anchor saying bye for now. Cheers. Take care.